Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Uh, welcome to another edition of uh, the Axis of Trader.com nightly wrap-up show. Uh, hope everybody did, did okay today. Had a we had a really good day. I mean, really good day. Uh, value came back today, uh, and that was very, very important. Because again, yesterday was a very unusual session, and the, the key to yesterday's session was everybody wanted to know what happens next, right? So we had the big 900-point rally yesterday in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Again, you might look at it as a little bit skewed. Again, there's only 30 stocks, not really that much uh, to get them all going. But the, the most important part of yesterday's session was what were we going to be in for next? Because again, it's very, very easy to conceive the idea that, okay, we're up 1,000 points, 4%, uh, almost a 4% move on uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, 3% on the S&P, 25 on the NASDAQ. What happens next? And you, you have to give the bulls an incredible amount of kudos today. You really did. Even the names that had big, big runs yesterday, right? Uh, Dallas, right? You know, the airlines, you know, DAL uh, acted very, very well today. Again, you had a big, big move yesterday. Uh, only a small, literally flat day today. Uh, win, just to give you an idea, just one of the, you know, casinos, again, had a monster day yesterday. Again, no give back, right? Absolutely no give back. Uh, Boeing had a huge, huge day yesterday, right? One of the biggest days yesterday. And the majority of the day today, it was literally flat on the day and, you know, or up a little bit, down a little bit. But again, very, very aggressive day of rest. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but that's what we had. We had an incredibly good structured day of rest today for the names that had the big, big runs and everything looked bullish. Matter of fact, not only did the names hold up very, very well, but the NASDAQ composite that had a huge move yesterday, right? A lot of, you know, a lot of names, a lot of semiconductors uh, really benefited from the run. And they even reclaimed, okay, you remember the three areas that kept on getting rejected, right? Off that 228 level, okay? Uh, it kept on getting rejected and today it reclaimed. So everything was going well. Everything was going fine. Uh, Amazon was going nuts. Tesla was ready to, ready to have a setup tomorrow that would have been... Phenomenal. Boeing was ready to have a second day run. That was phenomenal. Amazon was going to see 2,500 tomorrow. Okay. BYND was going to go back to 52 week highs. Everything was setting up perfectly. And the key to the point was it was. And if you look at the last five minutes, okay, last, even say 30 minutes of the day, when I left, the, the, the Dow was, you know, Dow was at the high of the day. The Qs were at the high of the day. I came back and everything got absolutely destroyed. And it really does prove to you two things. Number one, I've been saying this for years. Dumb money trades in the morning. When I say dumb, I'm not saying this condescending. I'm part of the dumb money, okay? From the time of 9.30 in the morning Eastern time to roughly about one o'clock, that is our window for aggression. It's always been our window for aggression. That's when uh, traders are waking up in the morning, whether they're educated, uneducated, funded, uh, not funded, whatever the case may be, they wake up in the morning and their juices are flowing and their testosterone is flowing. You two ladies, the testosterone is flowing as well, right? Everybody's waking up very, very excited. And they want the hot stuff. They want to get involved with anything that's going to be the 900% runner, and that is called the dumb money, okay? And I participate in the dumb money because again, I know that's our greatest window for aggression because again, the, prudence, the prudent idiot theory always says there's somebody always dumber behind you, okay? And that's what the dumb money is. It keeps on chasing, 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 chasing. That's why stocks sometimes go three, four, five, eight dollars per share per candle. The afternoon, as everybody knows, gets quieter, okay? The ranges start to contract. The people who woke up with last night's erection, okay, they're tired. They're burnt out. They probably are repeating the same things they've done when they started trading. They're, again, they're chasing everything in sight and having nothing to show for it. The people who took advantage of those uneducated traders, okay, they're sitting there and they're kind of plotting out their uh, you know, point of attack for the next day. And what happens in the afternoon is something that I know a lot of new traders face, okay, 
And the theory is, I gave back my whole day, right? You ever hear, you ever hear that expression? I gave back my whole day. A lot of people say that, and think about this. You don't give back your whole day in the morning, you give back your whole day in the afternoon. Because what happens is, again, ranges start to contract, okay? Uh, the smart money, and, and again, the word smart is very, very subjective, but what they start doing is they start building their positions for the next day. That's why, again, the areas of concentration of these channels start to get tighter and tighter and tighter. And that's why I always say any trade that you think you can get in the morning, excuse me, in the afternoon for 50 cents, 70 cents a dollar, you can get the next day with exactly the same setup for two, three, four, five, eight dollars a share. Again, dumb money in the morning, raise your hand, that's me, right? And everybody else, smart money in the afternoon, Fidelity, Magellan, uh, you know, any hedge fund that's building a position for the next trading day. And that's why a lot of times you are exposed in the afternoon because you believe, right, that there's always an opportunity. The one thing you don't understand is people already got ga gassed out. All these emotional people who got burnt out, lost money, they're wiped out. They're mentally wiped out. They don't want to trade for the rest of the day, so they leave alone. The people who have been trading for a very long time, we understand this. The value is always in the morning. That's why unless I see a really good tight aggressive daily channel for example on an amazon or a tesla 99 percent of the time i'm probably done by the day by one o'clock okay maybe if i see something really really good at two o'clock or something again tesla or amazon netflix when it's hot but other than that i'm not going to touch it because again i do recognize there's much more value in the morning and the biggest thing that you're always going to be exposed to think about this way guys what sets the tone in the market every single day is some sort of news so for example Last night or yesterday, we had news that mRNA, right? mRNA, um, phase one, right? Phase one, and the headline read, phase one, uh, vaccine, everything is good in the world. We're opening up everything, right? And the market rallied, 900 points. And if you look at it today, excuse me, if you look at it in the morning, it set the tone, right? The market gapped up really, really aggressively and really, really set the tone. If you look at yesterday afternoon, what happened, right? What happened yesterday in the afternoon? mRNA, so everybody chased up mRNA here. And by the afternoon, people got, you know, very, very tired, very, very tired. And ultimately, they started selling the stock a little bit, into, well, not a little bit, but they started selling the stock into the close. So picture this as kind of a macro view of trader psychology, right? You have your big, big aggression, chase, 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 chase. And again, I'm just using mRNA as an example. I'm talking about literally for the macro market. You could, you could put in Amazon, Netflix, Tesla. You could put in whatever you want, whatever stock you desire, right? So the dumb money's here, okay? The smart money's here. And again, smart money doesn't translate into price directional movement the next day. It just means that, again, look at the ranges here. Look at the ranges here. Look at the ranges here, right? The first three, four hours of the day and look how tighter the channels are getting, right? Towards the end of the day, all right? Look how tight they're getting, okay? And it's not because this is a good stock, bad stock. That means, again, most of the traders are already, already mentally wiped out and whoever wants to take a bigger position, okay, a more longer view, a longer leash into the name is gonna start putting on a position for the next day. And that's kind of what you have all the time. And what you have, unfortunately, what you have in the afternoon, not only that, you're always exposed to yourself into something called, right? The news effect. What's going on in the news? Good news, bad news, COVID. Good news, bad news, China. And any time, if you guys notice for the last two, three years, every bombshell that drops, it's never at 10 o'clock in the morning, right? It's not at 8.30 in the morning. It's not at 11 o'clock in the morning. It happens at two o'clock. It happens at three o'clock. And everybody is so exposed because again, we're looking at the market one way, we have our opinion one way, and then next thing you know, the whole rug is pulled. And that's exactly what happened today. And if you look at the cues, everything was phenomenal for tomorrow, man. I was so bullish. I logged off. I've been logging off now every day at 2.30. I've been either playing basketball and the weather is good uh, in my driveway and, you know, or playing, you know, with the kids, whatever the case may be, or, you know, doing either the elliptical machine or the Peloton if it rains. So I get my exercise at 2.30 every day. Uh, I mentally, it's like taking a vacation, it kind of clears my head and it gives me a really, really sharp view in, 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 into the morning instead of staying till four o'clock, burning myself out, having absolutely no energy and kind of that kind of spills over into my afternoon, uh, into my little, literally afternoon. I'm just so exhausted. I don't want to do anything with my, with my kids. So I've been doing 
doing doing that pretty much for the last three months has been really really helping i, I really recommend um a lot of you guys actually start doing that because again we're trapped at home we don't get a lot of uh, we don't get a lot of windows in between work uh, and family time to get some exercise, so it's really a good point. But what I do at the same time is completely I remove the the afternoon missile, right? The afternoon random headline that comes. And again, if you look at the cues today, they were they were great, man. They were great. Look at the look at this move, right? It was like three o'clock, and then next thing you know. I mean, it was just absolute destruction. And again, the, the best way to stay in this business, okay? And I say this, all, I've been getting these emails now for 10 years. You know, I've been doing this platform for 10 years. All the time people say, hey, Dan, I, you know, I, I have this bad problem in the afternoon. I give back a lot of my day or I give back 20% of my day. I give back 30% of my day. What's the best advice? Stop trading the afternoon. That's it. It's just that simple. Stop trading the afternoon. Whatever you think you love, right? Whatever you think you love uh, for the next day, leave it for the next day. So for a perfect example, like I really love this NOW, right? We were watching this thing all day today and around two o'clock, it finally broke out. Two o'clock, we were watching this and we were watching this, um, we were watching this order flow the whole day. You started, started seeing uh, short-term uh, weekly call buyers coming in for the 400 calls over and over and over again. And my point was the stock already made it. It's pretty much average true range for the rest of the day, right? So I don't care that it broke out today. What's the point of it doing today if I could buy it tomorrow for a potential macro move? So again, this is a perfect example. It broke out today, only went up like a dollar and change, okay? And instead of, you know, instead of taking the stock and getting, you know, getting killed for an $8 candle to the downside, again, I've been kind of training myself that year after year, year after year, year after year, that again, wait for the next day. So, Because if, if it confirms today's price action tomorrow, there's a higher probability that you are going to get a bigger move okay, tomorrow than you are going to get one at 2 o'clock, 2.30 in the afternoon after everybody's so exhausted and the average true range is starting to shrink, shrink, shrink because the stock already put in 90, 95% of that move throughout the day. Um, so I, I think, you know, again, the easiest way to do it, guys, treat it like a business. Again, for all you new traders, uh, you got a window from 930 in the morning to about one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, again, get four, four and a half hours, try to get as much as you possibly can to accomplish. And the best way of the best way of completely stop giving back your day in the afternoon, right? It's like, it's like, doctor, it hurts when I do this. What do I do? Why don't you stop doing that, right? Stop trading the afternoon. It's just, it's just much more, uh, it's much more feasible uh, for your workload, for your mentality. It's going to keep you fresh and very, very, uh, and, and very, very aware of what's going on uh, for the next day. Uh, so again, pretty aggressive action today. Yesterday was a weird, weird day. Uh, we had some pivots, we had some bounces. Da, da, da. Today kind of, you know, kind of came back into form. Uh, really good pivots. Okay, really good pivots today. Uh, I caught Alibaba twice. Uh, I caught Tesla. It was really good. It was really, really good trading. Um, you know, some good moves all across the board. So let's talk about this. Um, I like Boeing today. It just never got there. Okay, it got, never got to the 137. There was also a 135 pivot that moved up. We'll talk about this. But I, I like this pivot macro uh, for the next couple of days. Uh, Alibaba, I really liked going to today's trading session. Uh, 217 needs to build. Uh, beautiful move on Alibaba. You know, beautiful move on Alibaba. Uh, so here is Alibaba. Here is the opening range here at 217, right? 217. Uh, the first move only gave about 60 cents. I took some cash flow and then re-entered and then the stock just really, really exploded uh, on the second entry. You know, nice move. When when it's highest, like 220 and change. Big, big move on Alibaba. Um, let's see, Alibaba. Cura, you know, didn't do anything. Uh, 1625, 1630. And again, this is a perfect example. I just don't trade random stocks. Uh, so here is Cura, uh, 1630, excuse me, Q uh, K U R A. Uh, so here was 1630, right? 1630 went to like 1660 again. Not really my thing. This is again why I just don't. I just don't really very rarely trade these random stocks. Uh, Netflix again, you know, a, a very big conundrum. We'll get to Amazon in a second. Um, you know, Netflix. It, it's not the same Netflix anymore. You know, like I've been saying for a couple of days, it goes up like a dollar, a dollar and a half, and then it goes down three. Then it goes up another dollar and, and, and again. So if you're trading for a dollar, dollar and a half. The trade is still there for you. It's just for some reason I can't get that big, 
really, really aggressive push. So 5650, uh, 5650, 57, it went to 59. But again, very, very choppy trader. Uh, again, here is the, the monster move of the day. Again, all we've been seeing for the last two, three days, Amazon. 2,500, 2,600, we saw 2,700, 2,900 uh, calls today, all short-term expiration. And yesterday was the breakout, right? 2420, huge daily supply needs to reclaim. Uh, it gapped up today and I said, listen, beautiful breakout yesterday, uh, 2,435 needs to reclaim for more. And Amazon just exploded, absolutely exploded. Uh, it took out even the, you know, it took out the high of the 52 week high, but here was the 20, you know, here was the 2435, just an absolute explosion, put up a $50 move. I know a lot of you guys did incredibly well with this thing from yesterday going into today. Fantastic move. Definitely the biggest move of the day. Uh, Roku uh, didn't quite make it up there. There was a sneaky pivot besides this area. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, didn't give a big move here, but uh, 83 held twice. If it builds below, it can flush the 80, and it did that, right? It did that. Uh, too low, uh, took down the 83. We talked about it last night, and it went right to 80, right? It went right to $80, which this becomes a major, major area now going forward, right? So here is the 83 it took out and went to the 80 and held this level here. So this is actually setting up for a better, better aggressive trade in case there is much more weakness uh, in the market ahead. But again, you know, nice little move there. Uh, Apple, uh, 316.50, 316.75 needs to build. Here was Apple, obviously, before the massive reversal, but here was Apple, right? Here's the 316.50, right? This whole area here, 316.50 went to almost 319. Uh, so that was good as well. Uh, Tesla, again, these were the initial, right? These were the initial uh, pivots on Tesla, 820 to the upside, 802. Uh, we actually caught a sneaky pivot. You'll see that in a second. Shop was definitely the craziest thing of the day. Okay, so we we talked. We've been talking about the shop 733 for for like a week, right? It held twice daily. If it builds below, it can flush. So in the middle of the day, the headline reads: Facebook is getting into blah 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 blah. The way the headline read, it was bad for shop, right? It was totally bad for shop. So here was the 733. The damn thing goes down $25. I try to hit a 730 bid. God knows how I did not get filled, okay? So I'm trying to hit a 730 bid. Somehow I don't get filled. And this thing goes down $21, right? $21, I would say 30, 40 seconds. The craziest part about that, or okay, I didn't get filled. It is what it is, right? The craziest part about this is the headline was really, really wrong, like really skewed. And it turns out that Shop is a customer of, of Facebook, right? It's a good thing for, for, for Shop that now it's going to be on Instagram, on Facebook. And the stock, I, I mean, literally, I, I've never seen such a, a stock going down 25 and 45 seconds. And then the stock going up 40, okay, and 10 minutes later. So, Ridiculous. If you, if you did catch that move, congratulations. I completely missed it. I'm still trying to figure out how I missed it. Um, Walmart uh, never got there. Uh, Baidu, you know, put up a move, uh, 120 before it sold off, uh, 120. Uh, here was the 120, uh, 120 build. It went to, you know, not a big move. Only went up like another dollar before it reversed. Uh, Roku is actually pretty good here for experienced traders only because it was a very sneaky channel. Uh, there's a sneaky area that if it gets there, it could, you know, it could wake up. 1875, 19. And here was Roku. Uh, I know some of you guys caught the trade. I missed this one. But here is the 1865, 19 area. It spiked right into supply of uh, 120. Uh, Oh yeah, so it kept on, Amazon just kept on exploding. Uh, first supply, and then it just went absolutely nuts after that. Alibaba, here it comes. Beautiful move to the 219 area. Uh, here is a sneaky pivot on Boeing. Uh, 134.75, 135 uh, needs to build. And again, this is right before the sell-off. So here is Boeing. Here is the one, uh, 134 right here, 134.75, right? 134.75, 135. Went next to the next supply zone, 136. And then all hell broke loose with the rest of the market. Um, and that's about it. And that's about it. Oh, so yeah, this is this is the tra uh, this is the trade uh, I caught as well. Uh, 815, very aggressive area for experienced trader. Still needs to confirm that 820. So I got long 815, 
It went to 820. I was making sales obviously along the way. I had a runner left and I was like, ugh, it just wouldn't, it just wouldn't, it just wouldn't get there. It just wouldn't push through, uh, which is unfortunate, but it wouldn't push through. And the next thing you know, the stock rolled over, obviously, and the stock went really like went, went red and went got destroyed. So good trade, uh, good trade on Tesla. Could have been great, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, solid morning, take on the way up, uh, 2,500 on deck, right? This was 20 minutes before I left. Not so much. Um, and that's it. And that's it. So a uh, pretty aggressive session. Uh, the problem now with tomorrow is everything's in the middle of the ranges. That's the problem. We've got everything in the middle of the ranges now. Um, I like some longs for tomorrow. I like some shorts, but I think tomorrow at the open, we're probably gonna have to be very, very patient because again, this last pull in the last 20, 30 minutes, it really messed up a lot of charts. So again, remember, we trade because there's value, not because the market's open. Good job today, guys. I will see you tomorrow on the field. Take care. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.